Next up is Xiong Lu. Hello, everyone. In this talk, we will see how to use Rust and BPF to analyze a layer 7 protocol such as AMQP and use BPF maps to conditionally drop some packets in order to protect the backend service. My name is Lou Xun, and I work as a software engineer at CCP Games. My job involves managing our RabbitMQ cluster. RabbitMQ is a message bus service. It speaks the AMQP protocol. We had a production incident caused by a faulty client, which created tens of thousands of AMQP consumers, and that quickly exhausted RabbitMQ's memory, rendering the entire service unavailable. We need to find a way to prevent this, for example, by limiting how many consumers are allowed. But adding such a feature in RabbitMQ will be a long process. Instead, we can use BPF to do it outside of the application. The idea is to build a BPF limiter program to track how many consumers have been declared by each connection. Once the limit is hit, the limiter program will tell the kernel to drop further consumer declared packets. While well, most other frameworks require C for BPF program, Red BPF allows you to write Rust for both the BPF and the user space program. Why use Rust instead of C? Well, let's not start a language war right now. At the end of the day, I simply love writing Rust. Anyway, Red BPF already supports XDP and socket filter programs. However, it seems neither would work for this use case. After some searching, I found that the Linux traffic control, or TC subsystem, can actually drop packets, and it can also use BPF program to make such decisions. All we need to do is make Red BPF able to generate such programs, which turns out to be relatively easy. In fact, all BPF programs are the same. That is to say, they use the same set of instructions. So it's really the input and output that defines the type of a BPF program. TC programs take the same input as socket filter. You can see the full change in the linked PR. With the PR merged, we can just use this TC action to mark a normal Rust function. And Red BPF will do its magic to build a BPF program out of your Rust code. In the program, we first use information in various network protocol headers to limit what packets we need to look at. We also extract the source IP and port for later use. Then we need to parse a little bit of the AMQP protocol. After reading several documents, we parse these few bytes to find out basic consume and basic cancel methods. Here is the core limiter program. We use the map as a counter for consumers per connection. We increase the counter when declaring a consumer, decrease it when we cancel one, and finally, if the count exceeds 10, we drop the declare packets. And that's pretty much it for the BPF program. Let's see whether it works. Here on the left, you can see a test application that tries to declare 11 consumers. Before we attach our limiter program, you can see that the client is able to declare all the consumers. Red BPF makes it very easy to compile BPF programs. But currently, we still need a few workarounds, which are wrapped by the cargo make command here. TC commands can look quite complex, but the Selenium documentation explains it very well, and that's what we are using here. Now try the test application again. We can see it cannot declare the 11th consumer. We have indeed succeeded. To wrap up, I want to compare the BPF solution with implementing such feature inside the application itself. In my opinion, BPF programs can be developed and deployed very quickly. We have a lot of confidence because of the kernel verifier. The downside is that we need to track application states manually, and sometimes it can cause unintended behavior. But I still think for cases like this to prevent misuse and guarantee service uptime, sacrificing a single application is a worthy trade-off while we wait for such safety mechanisms to be implemented inside the application. With the Red BPF project, next goal is to support other program types and hopefully make it an attractive alternative to BCC and other C-based BPF compilers. I'd also encourage everyone to give Red BPF a try and contribute if you can. That's it for my talk. Thanks, everyone. You can find the project on GitHub and contact me via email or Twitter.
Thank you very much, Xan. This was wonderful. I, I was not aware of this. It definitely a lot I learned. Definitely check out this project, Red BPF.